If you have experienced trauma, which is a good majority of us, do not click off this video. On this channel, we talk about all kinds of trauma, ways to identify it, and the side effects you may experience. One thing we need to talk about is what we need after experiencing trauma. There are all kinds of trauma. Duke University categorizes trauma as big T and little t trauma. Big T trauma are events such as natural disaster, sexual assault, or physical abuse. These are events that anyone would find traumatic. Little t trauma are events such as a breakup or divorce, being bullied, or the loss of a pet. These are events that may not impact everyone in the same manner. Unfortunately with trauma, the feelings don't go away because you've left the situation. Of course, we will always recommend seeing a mental health professional to begin working through trauma. However, there are things that we can do and be aware of to help us heal. Without further ado, let's have a serious chat about some things we need after experiencing trauma. You need to know this. Have you heard the phrase, time heals all wounds? For certain kinds of injuries, this phrase rings true. Think of a physical injury like a scrape on your leg. Over time, whether you place any ointments or band-aids on it, the scrape will still heal. Unfortunately, trauma doesn't heal the same. Healing trauma requires active mindfulness and a passion to do so. Unfortunately, we can't just stay in bed binging Netflix and ice cream while our trauma is passively healed. We have to actively and mindfully choose activities to heal. This might be actively choosing to seek a mental health professional to help you along the way. This might be actively choosing to mindfully push yourself outside your comfort zone to push past the trauma if you're ready. Regardless of how you do it, you have to actively decide to do the thing after experiencing trauma. So if you're wondering why your trauma is still haunting you, ask yourself if you have actively made steps to heal. If not, are you ready to? Solitude is not the move. Sai has a friend. Let's call her Sabrina. Sabrina was grown up in a family where looks are everything. Not just your physical aesthetic, but others' perception of the family was everything. Sabrina was taught to never let anyone see her sweat, cry, or know she wasn't 100% perfect. Around 14 or so, Sabrina was diagnosed with Generalized Anxiety Disorder, GAD. Instead of helping her understand what that meant or how to cope with it, Sabrina's family encouraged her to hide it from others and to even omit it from job applications for fear of being passed over. Fast forward to Sabrina as an adult. Whenever she was struggling mentally or financially, or just had a good old rough day, she didn't reach out to friends or any support system. She bottled it up and pretended everything was fine. This is not the move, besties. Talking about and recounting your trauma is an important part of the healing process. Although it can be painful, rehashing traumatic moments can help us understand why it was traumatic, why we responded the way we did, and how to not allow it to happen again. It sounds cheesy, but you're not alone. There are support groups for trauma and a very real chance that a family member or friend has experienced a similar traumatic event to you. Surround yourself with people whom you trust to be your support system. This is necessary to healing after experiencing trauma. One thing for you daily. We live in a self-care society where we are encouraged to practice self-care. When we experience trauma, self-care is usually so far out of our minds that our basic needs aren't even being met. Our entire being is focused on surviving the day. Once we have escaped the trauma environment, it's important that we reteach ourselves that that's not how every day needs to be. A great way to do that is to make sure you do one thing for you every day. Before the trauma, did you like to style a nice outfit, your hair, makeup, and accessories? Try it again. Maybe there was a special treat you like to bake. Bake it. It doesn't have to be anything big either. It could be planning out your day ahead so it's less stressful, working out, meal prepping, or even doing a special step of your hygiene routine to make it feel more luxurious. Whatever it is, it's just for you and to make you feel amazing, as you should. Who needs forgiveness? When you start to heal from your trauma, you may come to a point in your journey where you're ready to forgive. But what or who do you forgive? Do you forgive and accept that your trauma happened? Do you find a way to forgive the person who did the trauma to you? By using these prompts as your motivation, you're still putting the trauma or the abuser at the center of your life. This is what we're trying to change. We're trying to create a new healthy habit to replace the trauma response we've created. According to Dr. Romani, we need to learn to focus on forgiving ourselves. Oh, yeah, I felt majorly uncomfortable when I heard that too. Forgive myself? Be nice to myself? Oh, we don't do that here. No, ma'am. 
But then I paused and asked, why not? Why can't I forgive myself for my trauma? In her video, Focus on Forgiving Yourself, Not the Narcissist, Dr. Romani explains that forgiveness is meant to be a gift to the receiver. It's meant to be an opportunity to learn from your mistakes and better yourself. Let's say your trauma is narcissistic abuse. Will a narcissist see that there's something they need to work on? Will a narcissist want to better themselves? They might, but there's a fair chance they won't. Since you're here, watching this video, chances are you're looking to better yourself right now. This may mean you're ready to forgive yourself for what you've experienced and promise to never put yourself in that position again. Trauma is no joke. It's almost like a rash. The longer it goes untreated, the worse it can get, and the longer it can take to heal. Sometimes it may not be obvious that you experienced trauma. Talk to your family, friends, and trusted loved ones about your experiences if you're unsure. If it sounds like trauma, please be sure to set up an appointment with a trusted mental health professional. They will always be the first step. Have you been through trauma healing? If you're comfortable, tell us your story below. We'd love to hear about your journey. Also, if you like what you see, subscribe and share it with someone who needs to hear this.